good and bad for ego. Correct or not correct for the purpose of creation is truth and falsehood. Today we see that sometimes the truth becomes falsehood and the falsehood becomes truth. It all inverts. You don't know what the truth. The problem is that truth comes bad, it comes bitter, and the lie comes as sweet. And then I can't disconnect from that sweetness. Uh, we are addicted to sweet in a way, of course. And if I look at the bitter, even if it's the truth, I don't want to look at it. It's I truly. But if it was truly according to sweet and bitter, it would be very easy to find. All of a sudden, the bitter can't be sweet. That's only with babies, with little children, or to still vegetative and animate. And for the speaking, for the human being that needs to grow, they confuse him. They already put in sweet and bitter and truth and false. You already confused me. I'm completely confused. I have to go to the... Sometimes I'm, I have to go back to this. I'm completely confused. The things that are talking here, in short, they didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. How will Pharaoh hear me? This is like the nation of Israel didn't want to hear Moses. So what do Pharaoh and Moses come? They come to the nation of Israel and they say, it was promised to us that we're leaving Egypt. The Creator is taking us out of Egypt. What is Pharaoh says, eh, leave us. The nation of Israel says, eh, leave. It's difficult. We heard such promises. We already know this. It's like the elections, yes? You know, they promise, they promise us, and eh, we're fed up with that already. Be a little bit more realistic. We can't. Uh, we'll just stay the way we are. Don't spoil the relationships we have with Pharaoh, with the United States uh, today. Uh, don't reveal anything to us. Don't tell us anything. Uh, leave us the way we are. We're living this way with this uh, milky pu chocolate pudding, and uh, where it's a little difficult. It's, it's a little bit more expensive, but we, we're getting along. That's what the nation says. And then, what does the Creator need to do? No, the Creator persists stubborn man, man. yes we kind of like kind of uh, annoy the ego and we have to push them a little bit so it'll suffer more and then when it pressures a person more and then a person maybe will want to leave to leave the ego do you understand what state we're in when I come to a person and I say I will help you to be the, of the next world to come to perfection to Come to eternality and uh, and endless ends of, uh, but but you need now uh, to go through a certain period in which you need to learn a little and understand what's happening and not to agree with your ego and to rise above it, although it's not that easy, but it's worthwhile for you. Uh, it's a long path. God says to Pharaoh and to Moses and Aaron that Pharaoh will ask of them signs and uh, and wonders. What what does this mean? This is actually what uh, Moses says to uh, the Creator. Moses says, "How how will I talk to him? They they're not listening to me and they won't hear me. By what will I come to them? How will I get their attention? Yes, let's say now you." Uh, you're getting a, a drive to go out to the nation and to explain something and to tell them that you know how to save the people in the state of Israel and even the whole world, yes? From all the bad there is and from the whole world and that this is our nature and we can invert this nature. We just need to see that in us what controls is this force of evil, this Pharaoh, this ego, and we need to take it out of us. There's a method that we can elude him from us. Well, and then what? Will they hear you or not? How will you talk to them? That's the Moses who's standing there and saying, you say, you want now, before the elections, let's say, you want to open some uh, party of the exodus from Egypt. Well, how will you do it? The Creator says, I'll help you. Go for it. Go to it. I'll help you. How will I help you? I, I'll make Pharaoh even more harsh, even more powerful. The ego in them will be even more cruel. Yeah, the absolute opposite. I'll uh, harden his heart. Yes, I'm going to look at you in a way that he'll look at you in a way that you're a liar. They won't want to listen to you. But you're going to go with that. Moshe doesn't know what to do. He's like, how can it be? What? 
This is called assistance. And then the Creator says, I will give you a special assistance. I'll give you a staff. Hold on to it. So he's holding the staff, throw it, and there'll be a serpent. Hold it, and it'll be a staff. Meaning, depending on how you go ahead, you're either holding the control in your hand, then you will go ahead. If you throw this thing, you put your hands up, you give up, you put the hands of faith up, you fail. So what is the staff? The staff is a special force that with which you, if a person ascends, the staff is from below. If one rises above his ego, he's capable of doing everything. If he enters into his ego, his ego controls him. Hence, those uh, cartoms, those uh, advisors of Pharaoh, they also know these tricks. Yeah, it's like that kind of magic for them is nothing. It's like there's no f special force that Moshe has that wants to take out the whole of the nation of Israel out of Egypt. There's no special strength there or forces. And then. If so, but they did the little trick with the uh, with the alligators. They like eat through one uh, to a snake, and they did the, they're, they're like eating something there. No, but here comes the stage of the ten plagues, the ten blows, meaning the will to receive on one hand and Moshe and Aaron on the other side the force in a person called Moshe and Aaron and the force in a person called Pharaoh, the ego, have come to such uh, revs, we'll say, such a peak of face-to-face uh, -face where there has to be a blow already. Yes, a, a front, frontal blow. And here this um, process of the ten blows occur, begins where the Creator brings them well, we're only in the end of the tenth plague, the tenth, tenth blow. Pharaoh will agree to free the, the people, and they leave Egypt. 